Isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to be that boring. I'm going to put you all to sleep. I get it. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'll give a quick recap on uh, the weekend uh, at Auburn. Uh, you know, any road win obviously is a, is a, a great win, uh, especially in the fashion that uh, uh, we came back uh, from a 17 to nothing deficit. Um, I think the things that stand out after, you know, doing a deeper dive, um, you know, defensively in the second half, the turnovers, taking the football away, um, and then, you know, running the football. You know, we looked at our last three SEC games. We're averaging six yards per rush in the second half. You know, I think we've said from the very beginning the ability to run the football in the SEC was going to be a very important part of winning football games, you know. Um, We'd like to win them in, in a different fashion, but winning is winning. And um, I think those things stand out. Special teams was much improved. Um, we're getting the kind of play and effort necessary. Um, you know, if there are penalties on those teams, uh, we're getting great effort uh, from that group. And um, I think those are, those are probably the highlights in terms of um, – things to take from. But look, I, I'm going to say this, and, and I'll, I'll talk to our team about it a little bit later. You know, it's pretty clear this team plays with great heart, um, and and they, they'll fight. But heart and fight will not win games against uh, the opponents that we're going to have over the next month or so. Um, we're going to have to have better execution. We're going to have to coach better. Uh, and, and those things were going to have to be on display starting this weekend against an outstanding Tennessee football team. Um, you know, uh, Josh Heupel's done a great job in a very short period of time of, you know, putting his stamp on this team. It is a fast-paced team. Uh, they're the fastest team in college football. They snapped the ball with an average of about 20 seconds on the clock. Um, you know, it's led by uh, Hendon Hooker, who I got a chance to go against uh, when he was at Virginia Tech, he is talented. Uh, he's big, he's physical, he can throw the football, uh, he runs it, um, and, and, and he's, got, um, he's got playmakers. Uh, they, uh, they're electric at the slot with Hyatt. Uh, you've got a big body guy in McCoy, Brew McCoy. Um, you know, Tillman obviously didn't play last week, uh, but he's, uh, you know, obviously an alpha out there for them. And uh, whether he plays or not, uh, they are talented at the wide receiver position. Um, big physical up front. They want to run the football. Uh, and then defensively, uh, you've got athletes all over the place. Uh, on the front, they played 12 players uh, on their defense uh, in the defensive line. So they're rolling guys in and out. So uh, I think, you know, a team that is deserving of their ranking, uh, they've earned it. Uh, they're talented on both sides of the ball. Special teams, uh, aggressive. Um, I think they've got, uh, you know, something like 15 kickoffs and half go to the right, half go to the left. A very talented kicking team. So uh, a great challenge for our group, one that we're looking forward to. 11 a.m. start, so get there early. Um, look, I, I mean, I'd like to be the cheerleader here and say, hey, come out early and, and get going. But look, um, it's Tiger Stadium. It's LSU football. Um, if you're not excited for that, um, I, I don't know what gets you going uh, in October. Um, you know, there's, there's time to do other things, but LSU playing Tennessee um, in Tiger Stadium, tell me what else is better to do. This is, this is an awesome opportunity, so please come out and support your uh, LSU Tigers. That PSA announcement was pretty good, wasn't it? It's was pretty good. Thank you very much. Hey, Brian. Uh, I don't think many people before the season would have believed through five games Kayshawn would have no touchdowns and fewer than 100 yards receiving. Why has he struggled to get going? Yeah, I mean, I think that's – look, I mean, part of this is building trust with a new quarterback. Um, you know, obviously we're trying to get him the football. Um, he's getting a lot of double coverage. Um you know, we're still winning. He's happy that we're winning. Look, all those guys that make decisions about who the best receivers are in the country um, are still going to look at Kayshawn and go, 
he, that's a really, really good wide receiver. Um, numbers are numbers. Um, at the end of the day, um, he's going to continue to play this game at the next level, and the numbers won't dictate where he gets drafted. Uh, it's his ability to continue to play the game at the highest of levels. And when you turn on the film and he's running full speed and he's beating guys and the ball didn't come to him for some whatever reason, that's out of his control. So what Kayshawn continues to do better each and every week is he controls what he can control. And he does that in practice now and he does that in games. Um, he was happy we won the football game. Um, would he like the ball more? Absolutely. Would I like to get it to him more? Absolutely. Um, but he's handled himself. Uh, he's handled himself in the right way, uh, and he continues to work for the team. Ryan, sort of building off the passing game, I guess discussion. There hasn't been much of a downfield th vertical threat, I guess, this year. Is there a solution that you have in mind for that, or are you going to kind of have to live with like the quick passing game and just trying to make that more effective than it was against Auburn? We've had. I mean. If, I could give you a, a video clip of all the, you know, the, the throws downfield. We've had a number of deep ball throws. They weren't this week. Uh, last week uh, against New Mexico, that was uh, a cover eight. That, that was short passing game, catch it, run after the catch, threw for over 300 yards. Uh, this past weekend was not good enough. Um, that's not going to get you a sustainable um, – uh, offense uh, that can win games at the highest level uh, in the SEC. Uh, but that's coaching uh, and that's playing. And what I mean by coaching and playing is um, we, we have to prepare better. Our fundamentals have to be better. Um, we have to look at, at the passing game. Are we doing too much? Uh, are we um, doing the things that, that highlight our players? And then in turn, our players have to look at themselves and, and are they preparing the right way? Um, and, and is there attention to the details necessary? So this is an all of us together that we need to get better and the recognition and the awareness that 85 yards is not going to get it done. But it's a new week. And uh, the one thing that doesn't carry over very well uh, in college football uh, is the last week. Um, so we expect to, to be much better. Hey, Coach, here to your right. Um, when you take a look at the video from the Auburn game, do you guys have, like, you take a look at not only wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, passes that hit them on the hands, whether it's a little bit off the mark or not, and catchable balls that aren't caught? How would you reflect on that? And not only Kayshawn, but before the year, everyone kind of thought your wide receivers were the strength of the team. What, what can you do to get those guys more involved? Yeah, I think I, I, I would continue to, to, to answer the question. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, they, everybody should be, you know, uh, asking the same questions. Um, but I will tell you that, that it starts with um, putting together um, a comprehensive plan that uh, can be repeated uh, in the game. And uh, the guy that has his hands on the ball is the quarterback. Um, and, and he's going to get most of um, the uh, notoriety when we do well, and he's going to get a lot of the blame when it doesn't go well. So uh, the quarterback is part of this. Uh, the wide receivers have got to be better at attention to detail. Their routes have to be better. Um, we've got to throw it better and catch it better. There were probably five or six, and you probably can all – um, remember them, where there needed to be a little bit better of a throw and a little bit better of a catch. Um, and so that also goes to play calling. We, we've got to be able to look at, are these the plays that we can repeat? Um, and are we doing too much? I think uh, we're, we're, we're looking at it in, in all of those areas because this is not going to work. Uh, we can't throw for 85 yards. Uh, with the talent that we have um, and expect to beat the, the top 10 teams in the country. Um, right here. Yes. You said, that, <laughs> you said that Tennessee has the fastest offense in the country. With a defense like yours that likes to disguise looks, um, you know, how does that impact your game plan and what makes that difficult? 
yeah, you got to get your cleats in the ground and you got to go play. So in one instance, they can't do a lot of things either, right? So if they're going to snap the ball with 20 seconds on the clock, there's not a lot of motion. There's not a lot of changing of formations. They've got to line up right and left too. So to play fast allows you, you know, obviously a, a pretty clean look at what you're getting. But on the other side, you're right. You can't do a lot defensively. But what you can do is get your cleats in the ground, line up, uh, play fast, play free, and, and play physical. Uh, and that's what we'll have to do against a, a really good uh, Tennessee offense. Hey, Coach. Um, now, that, now that you've had time to sort of review the tape, uh, with, with the coverage bus, especially in the first half, what, what were you sort of seeing in, in that uh, department? There were coverage busts. Do you want me to call out some guys here publicly in front of you? No. Thank you, because I'm not going to. Talk slower. Um, look, we we've addressed the issues, um, the, their communication issues, and and then really, quite frankly, um, you know, making sure that our guys know the rules associated with with coverages, and 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 do your job. You know, don't try to do somebody else's job. Um, you know, we've been in flux a little bit back there, um, so making sure that there's great communication. Guys doing their job, not trying to do something that's not part of our system and rules, uh, and just over communicate it now. Just make sure that it's been communicated effectively, um, and do a good job teaching it. You know, and 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 redoubling our efforts to make sure that that point is getting across to to those guys that are in in that situation. A Florida State game, you mentioned, you know, maybe a little slow to. Noticed the the front Florida State was running last week. You said it was a little bit of the double zone. I guess do you think that's just kind of you know week to week what it's going to be a little bit of, you know, working on noticing what's going on with the defense and Jane Daniels just kind of you know recognizing. No, I don't think that can be the case. I, I think we have to improve. You know, we've got to be better at recognition. We've got to be able to um, look. There's a difference between being um, on the edge aggressively and, and um, being reckless. Um, we're, we're way too conservative right now. And, and so uh, I don't want to throw interceptions. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to turn the ball over. We haven't thrown any. Um, and that's not necessarily um, a bad thing in one respect. But if you're looking to be aggressive, you're going to throw an interception or two because somebody made a great play. Uh, because you you trust that you're going to throw it in there, um, and and we got to get Jaden to be a little bit more on that edge, um, and be a little bit more aggressive, and we will we'll get there with him, um, because that's the nature of this position. This position has to be with the skill players that we have. We've got to we've got to get that ball down the field, and we got to get it into some tight windows. Sometimes uh, they're not always going to be wide open. But those guys can make plays, and we got to get them the ball. Yeah, Brian, can you talk about uh, John Emery's game? And, and was the fumble necessarily his fault? It seemed like the backside defender came in untouched. Well, we had one side of the line going left and the other side of the line going right. That's not a good thing. Um, and, and so what actually ended up happening on the play was the backside uh, lineman was pulling. Uh, and uh, it, he was not supposed to be pulling. And John didn't expect it and, and got run into, and the ball came loose. Unexcusable. I mean, you still have to have great ball security in that situation. But um, it was a miscommunication, an understanding of what the play was. Somebody thought it was right and it was going left, and we had just a, a circus going on up front, and it created that um, – uh, collision in the backfield, which was unexpected, and, and jarred the ball loose. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the physical run was amazing, right? Um, you know, I, I think we still have to settle him down a little bit in the passing game. He had the nice catch, obviously, up the sideline, soft hands. Um, he needs to play with that kind of um, 
you know, calmness in the passing game. He got a little antsy the other time where he dropped it, but he's coming along. We can see it coming, and, and I just think it's just more reps for him, and he'll continue to, to settle in nicely. Coach, right up the middle. Just curious about your offensive line play. Obviously, it's been looking different each week. Where is it health-wise, and how did you think they did, given the circumstances they were facing? Yeah, I mean, we put a lot of pressure on them in the second half, obviously, right? I mean, we got down big. We had a great drive. I thought the protection was really good against uh, some really good pass rushers. Remember now, you know, we put 55 and 29. Now, 55 got hurt, uh, but, you know, they had 98 come in. They had two legitimate pass rushers, and you got two true freshmen out there battling. Um, but I, I thought, by and large, the offensive line has been a bright spot for us. And, and then, like, like we've talked about many, many times, the ability to run the football uh, when everybody in, in the stadium knows that, you know, LSU is going to run the football uh, and, you know, exerting our will to, to close out football games in the SEC um, says a lot about the, the growth of that offensive line. Yeah, he'll be back. Uh, he'll practice this week. Coach, down here in the front. How is Daniels physically? And two, after five games, are you where you thought you would kind of be as a team? Um, Daniels is fine. He had a, a bursa sack, which is, I don't know the exact, um, you know, medical um, deal with that. I, I wish I could be a little bit more precise and articulate, but um, it's, it's much more, it's not structural at all. Uh, but it's painful, and and so he was in pain, and, and so, um, you know, he just felt like he he was hurting the team being out there. But he felt good yesterday. The exam was clean. Um, we did an MRI just to make sure, and that came back clean. So um, he's now in a pretty good position where he feels like he he's a hundred percent. You know, I, I never really looked at it relative to, to the wins and losses piece. What I'm, I've looked at is, you know, w will we continue to get better each and every week as we go through the season? And can we develop an identity as a football team? And I, and I think that early on we've been able to identify that this football team will fight. Um, it's got grit. Uh, and those are – those are traits that sometimes don't ever show themselves during the season. So, yeah, I think we're ahead of it because to go on the road and be down 17 nothing and come back and win, um, that, that means that your, your program is establishing character within the ranks. And, and that, to me, you know, puts you on the right path. Hey, Coach, with Armani out these next few weeks, how much of a workload can we expect from Josh Williams, Noah Kane, you know, the whole running back room pretty much? And how would you like to see them, you know, utilize in their own role? I think what you see is what you get. Um, you know, Josh has been kind of the guy for us. He's extremely reliable in all areas of the game. He can pass protect for us. Um, made a mistake out on a on – a, uh, handoff sweep where, where he blocked below the waist, had a little bit of a, a mistake there, but he's usually really clean in all those areas and making good choices. He runs hard. Um, he, uh, he catches the ball out of backfield, so he's been really reliable. And then, and then as we talked about, you know, Emery's coming on. Like we, we feel like we can give him a little bit more and more each week. And then Kane comes in with fresh legs, and he's a big guy. So he kind of gives us a nice, you know, change up when, when he does get in the back. And we need all three. There's no doubt. Uh, hey, Coach, how is Seven Banks doing? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, so the diagnosis is a, a spinal cord bruise, um, which puts him similar to um, Major Burns' situation, where there was a bruise, um, nothing else, no, no structural issues. Um, that's probably going to take, you know, five, six weeks before we can get him back. Now, Major Burns starts, so talking about similar patterns here, Major Burns starts running today. He'll be outside running with us. Next week, he'll begin non-contact drills, football non-contact drills with us. Um, so there'll be a similar protocol and procedure, provided there's no setbacks along the way. So 
uh, really fortunate and, um, you know, really appreciate, you know, all the help that we got from, you know, our own medical team and, and uh, certainly Auburn's as well um, in, in what was a, a very scary situation. Uh, down in front, um, Brad Martell with Associated Press. So yes. first, just cracking the AP Top 25, curious about your uh, impression of how perception is matching reality on your team. And if, if you would, in the three um, major conference opponent games, there's been a kind of a trend where you've been down multiple scores in all three games, nearly overcame it in the first, did overcome it in the next two. Um, what are some of the good and bad you pull from that trend, and does it tell you any? Does it inform you in any particular way about where the team is now? Uh, we'll start with the top 25 um, perception versus reality. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, you know when you look at the body of work and you know who this football team is, you know. There's probably 35 teams that could be in the top 25, right, from 25 to 35. So, you know, that really is, you know, a judgment call. And, and um, you know, we feel like at this point the development of our football team will continue to take place through this month. And um, I think the more germane question is, you know, how do you get off to a better start against Power 5 teams so you're not have to rally in the second half. And, and what, what I will make clear when I get a chance to talk to the team is having heart and, you know, fighting um, the way we do, that's not going to get it done against Tennessee. That's not going to get it done against Florida at Florida or Mississippi or Alabama. We're going to have to execute better. Um, our details are going to have to be better technically, tactically. We've got to coach better. So... Um, Hopefully, um, what's come out of this is that we've learned that our preparation is going to have to be so much better. And then bring the heart. Then bring that fight. Because uh, you're going to need that too. But you can't just rely on that and play sloppy football and expect to win these games. Uh, I know you've seen a lot of football and great football over the years. The play BGA Ojolari made to come from the backside and run the quarterback down and, and force that fumble. How 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 good a play is that? How how gifted is is he as a player? I told him that was a captain's play, and and what I meant by that was that 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 was an effort play, and that was a timely play that that gave us the life that we needed uh, at that particular time. Remember now, it's seventeen nothing and. We needed something good to happen. And um, um, a leader like a BJ um, made a play when a play needed to be made. And um, those things need to happen. You know, players need to make plays, and um, BJ made a big play in that moment. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, you know, the run defense has been pretty consistent for you guys um, over the last several weeks. Um, Makai Wingo has been a big part of that, but just how would you evaluate the interior D line's play, um, especially since you know losing Mason Smith early in the year? Just how impressive you've been with that group and how they've held up? Yeah, it's uh, you know it was good this past weekend, uh, and and I think it, it got to that level. Wingo's been our most consistent. What made it better was J Roy, um, his play this weekend. Uh, is is what we need to see from him each and every week. Now he's been banged up. He's had a back issue. He's he's been banged up. He was injury free this week. He practiced all week, and you could see it in the way he played. If we can get that kind of play from J. Roy each and every week, um, we're we're going to be pretty good up front, even with the loss of a great player like Mason Smith. If I can go back to Garrett for a second, uh, just clarification. Which hand did he break, and does does it is he still your backup center if he can't snap, if it was his right hand? It was his left. So he's still your backup center? Yes, he is. Who else is repping there? Fitzgerald West. He was not available because he was in our concussion protocol. So we were up to you as the center. That's not good. That's what I mean. T-Bob could probably do it. Throw it back there. Did it?
that I got to get up on the history. You got to watch that one. Is there a joke to this? He didn't know that there was that, that many. Oh, they did too. So we got a penalty, re-snap, win the game. Of course, that's always historic in this sport. I get it. Let's try to do something better. Thank you.